A couple enthusiastically adopts a child, only to return her angrily six months later. The reason will shock you. This tragic story all began one night. Jessica sat beside six-year-old Namata as she sang a song to lull her to sleep. It had been their usual practice since she adopted the little black girl a few months ago. Before the end of the songs, Namata would fall asleep with a smile playing on her lips. However, that night, Namata just laid there, emotionless. Jessica assumed that the girl was tired and would sleep soon, but just as she was rounding up her lullaby, she was met with the shock of her life. Namata, with sorrow written all over her face, suddenly got up and cried out, Why did you do it? Filled with shock, Jessica immediately pulled away. As soon as she recovered from the shock, she moved closer to Namata once again. She tried to touch her, but the little girl sternly said, Don't touch me. Jessica was stunned. She had never seen Namata that agitated before. She watched on, silently hoping for clarity, uncertain about the next step to take. Out of the blue, Namata's voice broke through the silence. I miss my mom, she confessed. Perplexed, Jessica gently inquired why Namata missed her mom. The room held a heavy silence before Namata softly but coldly replied that her mom would always tell her and her siblings bedtime stories and tuck them into bed. This added another layer of shock for Jessica. As far as she was concerned, Namata never had a mom in her life. So who exactly was she referring to? Not wanting to push it, she carefully tucked Namata into bed. Jessica then gave a quick kiss on the little girl's forehead, which usually made her smile, but this time Namata remained oddly indifferent. When Jessica returned to her room, she told her husband Adam about the strange thing that happened, and he was equally worried. If Namata's words were true, then something was definitely wrong, very wrong. Adam and Jessica were parents to four children when they found themselves contemplating the possibility of expanding their family further. Their youngest child was Tyler, a high-spirited three-year-old. The couple began embracing the idea of adoption to welcome a fifth child into their loving fold. The prospect of adding to their family brought a mix of anticipation, doubts, and thoughtful consideration. But their desire to give an abandoned child a home and possibly a future and build him or her in an environment of love submerged their fears. Adam and Jessica contacted an agency in Uganda, and that's where they met Namata, a sad five-year-old girl. Namata's story was really touching. It was a sad tale of neglect. The Davis family were told about how Namata's mother, overwhelmed by grief after losing her husband, had to abandon her. Namata went through lonely nights as her mother struggled with her own pain. It was a truly heart-wrenching situation. Hearing Namata's story sparked profound empathy in Adam and Jessica. They were determined to mend the cracks in Namata's world, and eagerly embraced the chance to give her the love and care she missed out on. Before they left, Jessica held Namata's tiny hands, wiped away her tears, and made a promise to be the mom she never had, offering the warmth of a love that would never fade away. Within the next few weeks, the couple went through lots of paperwork. It was a challenging period. At some point, it began to seem like the adoption agency was hellbent on frustrating their efforts, but the couple had already come too far to give up. In some months, their efforts paid off when they signed the papers to make Namata officially part of their family. As soon as she got home, she was welcomed warmly by the other kids. They all presented her with thoughtful gifts. The family even baked a huge cake with her name written on it. Namata, who had never experienced such a display of love, broke down in tears. Afterward, the family took turns kissing her cheeks and whispering, you are welcome. Although every other thing went well, the communication between Namata and her new family was a hustle because Namata didn't know English, but the family didn't let the language gap stop them. They found other creative ways to communicate with Namata. Even though she only communicated through signs, they could still feel her liveliness. Her laughter became the best sound in the house, making everyone feel happy. The Davises didn't just adopt a child, they gained a source of happiness and saw how love could change someone's life in the most amazing ways. Within a few weeks after Namata moved in, 
Jessica enrolled her for English classes. As time went on, Namata gradually began to communicate in proper English, and that brought her even closer to each member of the family. After six months of learning, Namata could properly communicate in English. The Davises celebrated this milestone, but little did they know that tragedy lay ahead, and it all began that night that Namata confessed that she was missing her mom. At first, Jessica and her husband didn't ponder on this too much. They knew that no matter how bad her biological mother had treated her, it was still only natural for Namata, an innocent child, to miss her. They believed that they furnished her with enough care and attention, she would gradually let go of those feelings. Determined to help her heal, Jessica and Adam took Namata shopping. From clothes to toys and storybooks, they did everything to put a smile on her face, but that little trick only worked for a short while. One Sunday, the family had just returned from the cinema when Namata broke down again. She confessed that she hadn't been sleeping at night. She appreciated the Davises for their love, but she begged them for the possibility to see her mom, even just one time. As she spoke, everyone could see the fear boldly written in her eyes. When Adam tried moving close to her, she recoiled and began trembling from head to toe. Although she didn't say it, she looked at each of them as if they were going to harm her. Jessica slowly approached Namata, and in a calm voice, she reminded her how much she meant to them. We are never going to hurt you, baby. You're safe with us. I need you to always remember that. Jessica said calmly. She wasn't sure if her words would make the situation any better, but a few minutes after that, Namata stopped crying. Jessica then saw her off to her room. After this experience, Jessica and Adam knew there was more to Namata's adoption story. They gave her a few days before they called her into their room to have a talk with her. It took over an hour before Namata eventually opened up to her adoptive parents and what she said reduced them to tears. Namata shared stories that contradicted what the adoption agency had told them about the young girl's mom abandoning her. Instead, she told them about her mom, who, despite money troubles, always made time for her and her siblings. She told them the different sacrifices her mom made just so she could feed them. The one that touched Jessica the most was when Namata recounted how a creditor beat her mom black and blue after she failed to come up with the money she'd borrowed to pay Namata's school fees. As Namata spoke, Jessica could see how much she adored her mom. When Namata confessed that she'd been seeing her mom in her dreams, crying every night and begging her to return home, Jessica's heart broke into a million pieces. Now she understood why Namata sometimes acted the way she did. The little girl felt imprisoned, and Jessica immediately saw herself and her husband as the jailers. Although she and her husband had been lied to, their actions had simply deprived the little girl of the one thing she needed the most, her mother's love. After the confessions were over, Jessica pulled the trembling Namata into her arms. She wiped the beads of tears on her cheeks. Then she said, I promise to take you home to your mom. I know she is waiting for you and you'll be with her soon. Jessica could not even complete the rest of her sentence before she broke the hug and ran out of the room. She couldn't believe she would have to return Namata. The little girl, within the space of six months, had come to mean the world to her. But Jessica knew that if she truly loved Namata, then she would have to let her go. She knew that even though Namata's mom would never be able to give her the things she and her husband would be able to provide for her, it wasn't enough reason to separate a mother and her beloved child. After all, Namata had been doing just fine before they came into her life. The love the duo shared was evident, and that love, uh, Jessica believed would see them through trying times. Adam and Jessica, intrigued and concerned, decided to delve deeper. They desperately wanted to know the whole truth behind this heart-wrenching situation. After a thorough investigation, the Davises unraveled the shocking truth. Namata's mother had been deceived. She had been made to believe that Namata was chosen for educational sponsorship by the Davises abroad, with the plan for her to return home to Uganda afterward. The mother, hopeful for her child's future, willingly released Namata, unaware that her act of trust would separate her child from her forever. They had also promised Namata and her mom that they would speak to each other weekly on the phone. 
everything had been explained to Namata in her language. Hence, she was shocked when weeks passed by, yet she wasn't allowed to talk to her mom. She endured for as long as she could, until she eventually broke down. The Davises, on the other hand, were also victims of deception. The fabricated story the adoption officials told was a deceitful ploy to manipulate them into unknowingly participating in the unlawful act of child abduction. The revelation left Adam and Jessica not only shocked, but also crushed with a profound sense of betrayal. They were extremely angry and swore to deal with the agency for such illicit activity and heartless trade. They vowed to provide justice for Namata's family and other children in this condition. The Davises, now armed with the actual truth, embarked on a journey to rectify the situation and reunite Namata with her loving mother. A few days later, they reached out to Karen Riley, the founder of Reunite Uganda, to seek guidance and support to rectify the situation. Karen, known for her dedication to reuniting families, willingly offered to provide support where she could. Karen decided to search for Namata's biological mother and find a means to connect her to her daughter. Four weeks slowly went by before Karen called back. I found her. I found the girl's mother. Jessica heard as soon as she picked up the call. Her heart stopped for a second. And she felt a mix of fear and excitement. As much as she was happy that Namata would finally see her mom over the phone, it also meant that the time to say goodbye was close, and that realization broke her more than any pain she'd ever felt. After the call, Jessica went over to Namata's room, and she broke the good news to her. Before she was done talking, Namata flew into her arms and gave her the tightest hug ever. I will never forget this. Thank you, Mom. I love you, Namata said. Those words immediately made Jessica feel at peace. Although Namata had already begun calling her mom before then, it felt different this time around. It felt like an acknowledgement of the love they both felt towards each other. That's because she loved her adopted daughter so much that she knew she had to let her go. That evening, as agreed, Karen's video call came in at exactly 6 p.m. When Jessica picked up the call, she was overwhelmed with emotions. Namata's mom had dark circles and she'd lost a lot of weight, signs that she'd been having sleepless nights over her daughter's absence. Jessica also noticed the striking resemblance between Namata and her mom. Namata was just a spinning image of her. How could anyone be so wicked to tear such adorable souls apart? Jessica wondered as she signaled to Namata to come over so she could speak to her mom. As Jessica watched the mother and daughter conversation, her heart danced with joy. She couldn't understand the words that were exchanged, but she had never seen Namata that happy before. The little girl even got up and danced as her mom sang a song for her. Jessica didn't know what the song meant, but it was so emotional and beautifully sung that Jessica could barely contain her tears. After the call, Jessica and Adam knew it was time to get justice. Adam reached out to different news agencies, exposing the shocking truth surrounding Namata's adoption. Fueled by anger, he passionately advocated for justice, suggesting that the adoption agency should face consequences for their criminal actions. He emphasized the need to shut down such deceptive practices. Meanwhile, the Davises took immediate steps to reunite Namata with her biological family. The process of arranging the reunion was both meticulous and heart-wrenching. It involved coordinating with Karen Riley and her organization, Reunite Uganda, which played a pivotal role in facilitating these delicate proceedings. As plans took shape, the anticipation of Namata's departure was a bittersweet pill to swallow. Some concerned fellows objected to this, arguing that the Davises had legally adopted Namata. They said it was only legal to keep her as their own. But despite these tempting oppositions, Adam and Jessica stood firm in their conviction. They insisted that Namata wasn't a commodity picked off a shelf. and She was a human being and someone's biological child. She was entitled to the truth and the embrace of her rightful family. The legal documents were only obtained through deception, and to them, it would only be criminal to still keep her. After they had uncovered the truth, they would then be no different from the disguised kidnappers. And with this conviction, they began working on reversing the adoption. And to say goodbye, they had a special ceremony at their home. Friends and people who cared about her were there too. They talked about how much they liked Namata and how she made everyone smile. Hugs were shared and kind words filled the air. 
Each hug was like saying, even if you go, we'll keep you in our hearts. The Davises, in their talks, thanked Namata for bringing joy into their home. Namata also hugged each one of them, starting with Jessica. She even read out heartfelt letters that she'd written the previous night. To Jessica, she wrote, You taught me what it means to be cherished and supported, even though you didn't know me, and I'll carry those lessons with me always. Even though my journey leads me to new connections, you will forever be my guiding star. Thank you for being the mother I needed and I'll always love you with all my heart." Namata's siblings couldn't hold back their tears as she read out their letters as well. Everyone got emotional, but the right thing had to be done. A few days later, Namata, alongside her adoptive parents, traveled to Uganda for the much-awaited reunion. Namata's mother was waiting for them at the airport. As soon as she saw Namata from afar, she ran towards her, sweeping her off her feet and plastered kisses all over her face. I thought I would never see you again, she cried happily. Then she turned to the couple and pulled them in for a long hug before thanking them profusely. Jessica and her husband stayed a few days with the family before returning to the US. A few weeks later, Jessica and Adam got to speak with Namata on the phone with the help of Karen. As the screen went dark, Jessica wiped away her tears. She knew she'd missed Namata, but in her heart, she felt a warmth. The kind of warmth that comes from doing something good for someone else. Namata's family was whole again, and Jessica and her family played a part in that beautiful story of reuniting. Even though Namata left, the Davises knew it was the right thing to do, and they were glad to be a part of a story that was about making things right and bringing happiness back where it belonged. Afterward, the Davises, with the support of the media and various law enforcement agencies, continued their fight for justice and raised a powerful cry against human trafficking. Their voices, joined by many others, became a force demanding change. As their voices echoed through news channels and social media, the movement took shape. The cry for justice wasn't just about Namata. Other stories regarding the same incident started sprouting. The FBI, with its expertise in combating human trafficking, played a crucial role in unraveling the layers of deception that shrouded the deceptive agency. In the end, justice prevailed. Upon hearing the story of Namata and other stories, the State Department shut down the agency. The victory wasn't just about bringing an unjust agency to its knees. It was a triumph for Namata and every victim whose story had been silenced. The Davises, alongside law enforcement and the media, were celebrated for their courage and resilience in bringing justice to the helpless and vulnerable in society. What a beautiful story of love and sacrifice. What would you do if you were in Adam and Jessica's shoes? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. See you in the next video.